bit of a spray sesh. Uh, take two on these roof molds. Um, this one's the roof of the starboard head and then we've got the floors. Uh, we had a little bit of a problem with our uh, gel coater. But uh, I just thought I'd show you that the sort of prep that you've got to go through, it's taken me about five hours to get set up for this. But the most, the most hilarious thing is you've got to put bags on your feet, like this. Such a great look. It's like I feel like I'm going in for, a, for an operation. And uh, very important that we put this on. So if we don't put these on, mate, I'll stick to the floor. Okay, so this is about 20 minutes later. Um, yeah, much better result. Had a really good clean spray up session then and uh, we've got all our parts all ready to go. So the, the key to it was um, checking all the links in the in the gel coat machine, all of the hose fittings and everything had Teflon tape on them. There was obviously a little air escaping or sucking into the line that was affecting it. But um, yeah, cut a long story short, we got a much better result. Um, nice and clean spray up. So I'm here at the end of a pretty cold wintry day and uh, we've got the roof module here from um, the starboard bathroom or head. Um, that was laid up about two days ago. It's only three layers because I like to let them set really nicely a couple of days. To demold it, you need something like this, like a, a spatula. I call it my woody. Had it for quite a while and that's a very important tool this. Uh, everybody's woody is a very important tool. So that is the woody 
And uh, if that ever goes missing, there's shit to pay in our, in our factory here. The other thing I use is a couple of wedges, like really light hardwood wedges, just really nice and fine. You don't want anything too deep, you don't want anything that's gonna mark your product. So the trick is to, uh, to get this in between the product and the mold and then to tap these in nice and gently and just work your way around it and, and that's it, nice and simple. You don't need to go hammering it with any sledgehammers or anything. Uh, the trick is to, to sort of make sure that you, you get the thing demolded easily without cracking your product. So what you do is you get a uh, get your tool, try to find a, a gap, often enough to crack it. Yep, got a little crack there. You get your wedges and, and try to sort of methodically work around your product. Um, you shouldn't even need to hammer it, but uh, this thing has been a bit stubborn. Um, this is the second one I've made. Just get a light tap and just gently break, break your product and uh, and separate it from the mold. And that's really uh, all you need to do. And then I like to sort of work my way along until I feel it release. Oh, yeah, it's already released, which is good. Further along, just tap it gently. There we go. There's another release there. You hear it release? It just wants to get off. Uh, pretty much all the way off, all the way around. Um, pretty good actually. There'll be some stubborn spots in around hard uh, edges like this, and that certainly will make it grip. But the, the key is just to work gently. Don't get aggressive with it, because it's not going to help. I mean, I've had products that take me a day to get off the mold. Um, it's a patience thing, and the product ends up being better if you're not smashing it. There's no gel coat repairs to be done at the end. So we're here, we've got another yeah, a little bit of a stick up here, possibly. So we'll just get a another edge here. And the nice thing, you actually hear it, it goes, pfft, it almost releases, it cracks. And that cracking can be a bit disconcerting to the newcomer. But uh, what it does is uh, make sure that you've got a, a good release. And nothing aggressive. You never need to be aggressive with this. Uh, with this process because uh, if you do you're going to end up repairing for the next two or three days so here we go let's see if we can get it off yeah it's been a bit of a bastard so um, these paint stirrers are fantastic and you get two of these put one in put another one in on top of it get a wedge wedge that in between you should be able to get some release by just giving it a light push with another wedge or a bit of screwdriver or something, but just be very, very careful you don't damage your product. And, uh, it's definitely off. Getting my bastard off is the problem. There we go. Yes, we got him up there on this side. Oh, yes. Okay. So not very exciting, but uh, when you can lift up your product like that without having to damage it, yes. I had a. Um, a cock up with my gel coating machine, it didn't quite catalyze properly. So over here we have number one. Um, honestly, it's about two hours work. It's not worth it. You're better off to ditch it. That one was an absolute shocker. Uh, it doesn't happen very often, but it happens enough. This one here, I've just demolded as you saw. Absolutely perfect. And uh, all that needs now is a quick buff. It's ready to go into the bathroom and it's done. So yeah, very, very pleased with that result. Um, we're ready to uh, to get onto another product. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Jesus! Dad, it is so slippery. What are you doing, buddy? I'm sliding. Oh, <laughs> it's pretty slippery in there now, isn't it, mate? Yeah. Good job you got those nice rubber soles on. It's a bit ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> Look how grody I am. Yeah, that's polished dust. <laughs> I got that. <laughs> it's mining. It's beautiful. 
She's up here against her better judgment. Thank you, darling. Look, it might have been suggested that I was taking the piss out of all of the hard work and yacht polishers around the world. Well, I am. This is what you gotta do. You gotta make it fun, because I'll tell you what, it's tedium at its best. <laughs> it's pretty hot though, I'll tell ya. It's hot hard work. <laughs> Pretty hot in here, I'll tell you. So, a couple of last minute things. Quite like this uh, koala suit. That's actually quite warm because it's a bit of a cool day here. But uh, now I get why they uh, hang out in trees and eat eucalyptus leaves. Um, I've got a couple of holes here in the uh, in the deck that uh, were used as craning points for lifting the mole way back when, when the boat was in production. Um, Rather than fill them, because I may need to use them again, I uh, made up some vinyl sign writing um, patches and we're just going to simply uh, patch them over like that, put a little bit of backing behind it, spray over the top. It's that simple, we'll just uh, get a good bit of lamination. Ultimately, uh, it's not going to affect the, the finish of the hull, the, the um, contact will just lift off. So, uh, yeah, good solution. The other thing I've done too is I've made this uh, hatch insert. This hatch is going to sit down here on the chamfer panel and form a, a hatch in our forward uh, starboard bathroom and uh, give a bit of ventilation, you know, keep the moisture out and hopefully we don't leave it open when we're underway, but long time before that happens. So yeah, right on, get into it. What's going on here, Trace? Well, it's a little bit of the blue line uh, at the moment. We're trying to match, uh, match these two up, a little bit of a gap so that we can walk in here and spray. And then so this is the concept. Um, the blue line gives me the separating line. The blue sheet gives me something to walk on to spray off so I can do the, the sides, the chamfer panel. And then we're gonna remove the blue line which will separate between the gel coat and the sheet. And then uh, I'll be able to remove my plastic and get a nice clean line. Uh, way below the water line so it won't really matter. Don't you reckon, Trace? <laughs> it's the perfect plan. Good. It's the perfect plan. The perfect plan. Well, <laughs> There's one thing I've learnt when you're gel coating, it's shit when it's good and it's even shitter when it's shit. <laughs> Righto. That looks really fantastic. Hopefully that works, the process. Yeah, yeah it should um, give me the right. It's D-Day, day before Trace has got the waxing action happening here. <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> that one's gold. I don't know how many more polishing fails we can put up, but that one's going up. <laughs> Jesus, it is. That's uh, four it's coats very, of wax. Very, very Doesn't get any worse than that. So tomorrow's gel coat day. Looking good. We've got the technique, though, haven't we, Trace? Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Nice moccasins. Yes. <laughs> Not even matching. <laughs> Let's go one last walk up onto the uh, to the mile. This is the last time we're going to see this red for some time until uh, probably about November. So it's July now. Um, it's all ready to go. We've got our gear. Just turn my big fan off here. Uh, the fan we've had going at night to keep the humidity level down to uh, keep our humidity to within reasonable. We'll do a humidity test in a minute. 
uh, with our psychrometer. And uh, today is Delco day. So it's gonna be a fair bit of action going in here today. And uh, in about three or four hours, this is gonna be totally white. And uh, the beginnings of a very nice cat, hopefully. Yeah, I think everyone's gonna be pretty ecstatic. The fact that that might be the end of the polishing of the hull, it's been a bit of a process. I reckon I've spent six months uh, with a little bit of help to uh, to get that thing restored and ready to gel coat, but we're actually at that stage now. So in the next episode, and we'll have the gel coat time lapse and, uh, and some of the uh, lamination schedule. Now we're building this boat to Australian Maritime Safety Authority standards. They will be uh, doing periodic inspections on the hull and, uh, and in fact a complete build as we go and, uh, and that's quite an interesting process because it's quite strict. It's a very regimented uh, uh, procedure and yeah, it's certainly going to add a little bit of pressure so you might find me doing less editing and more working at that stage. Um, if you like this video, share it out, uh, subscribe wherever the subscribe button is and, uh, and click on the notifications and you'll, uh, you'll catch up on all the goings on on Life on the Mile. So join me next time. Thanks very much. See you later.